Hi, good morning. Welcome to our amazing event. Uh, this we hope to be one of the first of many forms to provide a place, a space, to talk about the arts and the arts role in the community. My name is Jeffrey Kidd. I'm the Managing Artistic Director at the Player Center for Performing Arts. Here, bright and early, to welcome you. Um, Josh suggested that we do a little good morning. Good morning. It's great to stay up late, but that's all you're going to get about. Um, before we start our talk, I would like to thank Cindy Miller and First Source Bank for sponsoring this event. Cindy's right there. Thank you so much, Cindy. First Source sees the importance of supporting their community theater, so thank you and First Source for the wonderful support. It is greatly appreciated. Um, each of you received an informational sheet about this breakfast chat. And our morning started with a delicious breakfast uh, provided by our friends at The Grove. Uh, I think we're certainly starting our day off right, I think, with a good sturdy breakfast, right? Um, our distinguished panel will have about 45 minutes to discuss their roles in the community. We will have time for questions from the audience towards the end. Uh, we will wrap up with an amazing giveaway from the, uh, the exchange. Karen Coblenz brought these wonderful boxes and we have some ticket giveaways and there's gift certificates in there, so it's a really wonderful morning. Um, after the event, feel free to hang around a little bit and uh, have a personal chat with our panelists. They will be here for you. Um, allow me to step away from the podium and uh, present Dom DeMeo. Dom is the president and CEO of the Lakewood Branch Business Alliance. He will introduce our panels and moderate our talk this morning. So Dom, take it away. Good morning, it's so nice to see a, a lot of friends and, and friendly faces. If I don't know you and I didn't get a chance to say hello, make sure you, you get me after, I'll say a few minutes as well. Um, you know, we're here to talk about the arts, more than entertainment if you look at uh, the brochure as you got it, but I'm, I guess we're here to say uh, that's entertainment. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, hopefully do a good job introducing what our iconic people sitting at the table with me. I, um, I believe they're the stars of where we're at this morning. So as we look at the arts and we look through the stars, I'm going to start with Aaron Nichols. Um, Aaron is the executive director of the South Bend Civic Theater. He is an award-winning actor, director, and designer. Having recently completed the executive program in arts and culture, cultural strategy at the University of Pennsylvania, one of my favorite places, he believes that the Civic Arts Organization has the responsibility to reflect its unique and vibrant community. Over the past two years, Aaron has successfully na navigated the organi organization from the red to the black, while double staffing, increasing community out outreach, and expanding educational programming. Please welcome Aaron. To Aaron's left is Dr. Stephanie Peabody. If you don't know Dr. Stephanie Peabody by now, then there's something wrong. <laughs> but Dr. Peabody is a clinical neuropsychologist. I had to actually say that one a couple times this morning. To make sure that and the founding director of the Brain Health Initiative and the Academy for Brain Health and Performance. She has over 25 years of experience as a clinician and program designer. Consistently working to improve outcomes in brain development, aging, and performance with a focus on brain health promotion, prevention, early identification, and evidence-based intervention. Please welcome Dr. Peabody. Someone not as new to the area, Mr. Shirley, Jim Shirley, is an executive director in arts and Cultural Alliance of Sarasota County. He's a longtime Sarasota resident with extensive ties to the arts and cultural community. Jim holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Central Arkansas and has more than 30 years experience in sales, marketing, and management. The Old Arts and Culture Alliance is a member-powered member organization. I think I know a little bit about that. Passionate about building appreciation, participation, and supports for the old arts and culture. Please welcome Jim Shirley. Hey Karen, sorry you were late. But, but the best. Um, coming in behind 
Mr. Shirley is Karen Copelands, the Executive Director CEO of The Exchange, formerly the Women's Exchange. With over 25 years of experience as an operations and marketing executive, Karen has a passion for making companies the best they can be. Due to a substantial increase in sales, the nonprofit chose to self-fund the nearly $2.5 million expansion while maintaining its current level of giving of $250,000 annually in the arts-related grants and scholarships. Please welcome Karen Cooper. So we're gonna jump right in, and since Karen went last, I'm gonna jump and start with Karen and ask her, Karen, what is the mission of the exchange and how do you feel the mission comes to fruition in our area? The mission of the Women's Exchange is to financially support local arts and cultural organizations as well as students pursuing a higher education in the arts. The money earned through the consignment operation is used for this purpose. Um, since the exchange was established, we have awarded more than $8 million in grants and scholarships. For us, I believe that the, that the art organizations, as well as the students, you know, the grant and scholarship program, they kind of go together. Through the art organization, these young students, a lot of them participate in, for instance, the Players Youth Program, and we have the Youth Opera and the Youth Orchestra and stuff like that. The, the children attend these, these um, programs and it gives them the confidence to move on into attend schools like Juilliard and Ringling and different schools of that caliber. So I think the two of them work together and I think it's important, especially in today's times, when our young people are so involved with electronics. Well, thank you. I'm gonna change gears just a little bit and ask Dr. Peabody, what are the research objectives of the Brain Foundation? All right, so I don't normally sit and talk for this long, but This background is to answer the question, 
to say that one of our objectives is to close the gap between lifespan and brain span and to increase the performance and health of our brain from preconception to the end of life. At the Brain Health Initiative, we hypothesize that by working together, together, across all sectors, with a proactive, collective impact approach, by developing communities, one community at a time, a culture that promotes brain health research and innovation, we will increase brain health outcomes across the lifespan with the focus on prevention, early identification and intervention, as well as, and including the through the arts, performance optimization of the brain across the lifespan. So, there you go. We will increase the adoption of brain health protective factors and decrease exposure and experience in brain health risk factors. And this will then reach our objective, which is to increase brain health and performance. There you go. So Jim, in the time you've been associated with the Alliance, what changes have you observed in the community's relationship with culture and the arts? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, I think if anybody reads the newspapers and, and watched the television in recent uh, months, uh, there have been some shifts, I think, uh, in Sarasota County and our region uh, that have been uh, really somewhat disturbing and somewhat encouraging. Uh, I, you know, if you look at uh, the nature of the community, Sarasota County, this entire region, is a region that has been built on arts and culture. Uh, going back, way back into the years, 100 years ago, with the Raymond Brothers and so on. And uh, part of that staple has been the nourishment of the arts and cultural organizations to help continue doing the kinds of things they do. Uh, and I think that we will reach some uh, positive um, uh, settlement of some of the things that are going on now with the orchestra and the Celtic Gardens. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that these things take place in public, but I think in the long run it's healthy. Because uh, one of the great situations we're facing here is, uh, I I've been around long enough to remember when this was all cow pastures out here. And you guys have had the ability to grow a community from the ground up which not many people get that opportunity, and one of the parts of that growth absolutely needs to include your identity, who you want to be, and a part of that is your cultural identity. What is it that we want this community to be as we grow? Now, very, very fortunate, you know, we're all a part of Sarasota County, and the Arts and Cultural Alliance is the Arts and Cultural Organization for Sarasota County. So I'm here for you as much as I'm here for anybody anywhere else in the county. And the opportunities are there. But I think the great thing that has I have seen in the 10 years I've been here is that this county and its people continue to embrace arts and culture as a very important part of our lives. And guess what? It's what makes it the great community that we have. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later. But I think the shifts that have come are shifts of growing pains, shifts of you know, cultural uh, significance of families, the way families are structured and so on. But through it all, arts and culture have helped us grow and continue to develop as one of the great regions of the country. Thank you, Jim. So Aaron, I'm gonna to turn to you. How has the presence of community theater impacted the South Bend community? I think the power of the arts, and I think specifically theater, because um, theater is that kind of coming together of all of the arts, especially musical theater, um, because you have, you have instrumental music, you have singing, you have dancing, you have all the things that have individual silos in the arts, but then all of these come together to tell a story. Um, I think that the power of storytelling, the power of seeing the world through someone else's eyes, I think that is one of the most powerful tools that we have. And in, in this society where empathy and compassion and vulnerability and civility, all of those kind of foreign concepts <laughs> uh, need to be uh, engendered, need to be given life and, and given sustenance, I think that theater is that place that can pull us together again. 
Um, I talk about empathy and theater being an engine of empathy. Um, and that, to me, is one of the greatest things that theater can do. Um, so for me, in my tenure at, at the Civic, I think finding those ways to open the doors to kind of creating these heterogeneous groups of people, where people of all different walks of life come and hear either their story or someone else's story told. Um, there's nothing better to kind of bring us back into one collective community than to hear someone else's story and to have that resonate with you uh, in a powerful way. So at, at, in the South Bend community, I think, you, I hear with like the ranch and everything that I'm hearing here in uh, uh, Florida, the idea of intentionality, because of all, of all of the communities that you're building are coming kind of built from scratch. You know, when you're in the Midwest, these communities have been around for a long time, and in some cases, those communities were intentionally created with separation in mind. So tearing down those walls and restoring that kind of intentional, unified community uh, has been one of my greatest tasks. And I think when you have something that has the word civic in its name, uh, we are the South Bend Civic Theater, when I came in and rebranded um, to make that word primary. And if you have that word, then that creates a, a following mandate to reflect and represent your community in its, in its whole. So I think representing your community, reflecting your community as it actually is and not as sometimes it's presented uh, is a powerful tool and a reminder that we have so much more in common than we do um, the, the things that, that separate us. So I think a, an arts organization that is really focused on community does acknowledge that and forward that idea of collective community and, and unity. And honestly, the thing that ties it all together is empathy. And theater can do that like no other art form, and I'm so proud to be able to do it. So Aaron, let me stay with you then a minute. And um, can you explain, do you, do you believe that having done what you've done could be accomplished um, and replicated somewhere else? Oh, absolutely. I think, but I think it is specific to place. Um, we have a very uh, diverse community in South Bend, and often that diversity is not seen in the arts. And so for us, that is one of my great goals, is to make sure that what we see on the stage reflects what, what is actually in my 100,000 member city. Um, and that's a challenge, and I think you have to be proactive to do that. But I think there are other, in, in a place like Sarasota, in a place like Lakewood Ranch, you know, what, what is the, what, where are the places we have our blinders on? Where, who are the people that aren't seeing themselves on the stages? Um, who are the people who don't hear their own story being told? And I think that's just an intentionality and a proactivity on the, on the, on the, the organizations, that that's the responsibility of the organization to try to, to scrape off those kind of, that, that calcified feeling that sometimes happens in the arts and find the ways that we can be fresh and, and new and responsive. Um, because I think a lot of the times we, we are, 10 years behind. I talk about the, the theater being responsive because it takes five years for a play to go from being written to being performed because there's just all of these, these processes that go through it. With community theater, sometimes you're waiting on a musical for 20 years before you can produce it. How do you tell your stories and be incredibly um, fresh? And that's sometimes developing your own stories. And I think every community has their own stories that they can start to bring forward. Uh, and that, again, takes time, takes money, takes effort, uh, but it's worth it. And I found that, and I think that that can be the case here in Sarasota as well. So hearing intentional and knowing that we are sitting in an area where SMR was very intentional and has done a great job of making sure that we experience that. Jim, do you have, does the Alliance have any intentions here in Lakewood Ranch? Well, we not only have intentions, we have active programming and, and we'll continue doing that. Uh, uh, a part of the, what the Alliance is for our community is we are the umbrella organization for everything arts and culture 
uh, technically in Sarasota County, but it spills over to Sarasota County and Manatee County. You had mentioned that we're a membership organization. Our membership is equally strong in both counties because of the impact of the arts on our region, and that's exactly the way that we view things. I have to tell you, when I heard and when Jeffrey mentioned to me that players were looking at coming to Lakewood Ranch, uh, it was to me the ideal situation that could happen because all of a sudden we've got the oldest theater in Sarasota County with an opportunity to come into one of the newer areas of the county, bring the expertise, bring the, the learning curves that they've had, and be able to open up a community theater here that will bring this level of arts and culture, and, and to your point, Aaron, of theater to a community like this. And the great thing about a very high level community theater is that you get the benefit of some equity, professional actors and actresses, but you also get the benefit of the community itself being able to be involved in that and, and to be able to build those bridges and to tear down those blind spots. There's nothing much more important than that. So I think of all of the potential organizations that could have moved to the east side of the county from the west side of the county, this is the ideal organization to bring to Lakewood Ranch. And I hope that you all will embrace it as that because they have been doing great theater now for 90, 90, 90 years. And um, so they, they, you know, they've got some experience. They know what they're doing. And a part of the role of the Arts and Cultural Alliance is to help make those transitions happen you know, at, at the ground level. For example, when we had the World Rowing Championships here, it was the Arts and Cultural Alliance that put together all of the entertainment, all the groups that were there to provide the entertainment uh, at the rowing facility for that. Uh, the aquarium is a cultural organization. It's the part of Moat Marine that we already support. And by definition, uh, you know, we, we can't really support the scientific side of Moat Marine because that's a different level of, uh, it's a different type of spin. But to support the, the aquarium is a cultural purpose. So you've got activity already going on here. Money being supported. Uh, we, we administer the tourist development tax for Sarasota County, uh, which uh, is one half of one penny of the bed tax. Well, that one half of one penny last year was $2.4 million, which we were able to help grant out to organizations in the community who could demonstrate that they bring tourists to our area through the arts. And Nora Patterson was always really strong in telling me, Jim, this is not about developing the arts. It's about developing tourism to the arts, which will help this part of the community as much as it will help any other part of the community. And the Players Theater has been receiving one of those grants for ever since it began because of the quality of the productions they put out and the things they do. So the Alliance can take our mission and help them continue to do their mission out here. I think it's a good opportunity for all of us. Karen. When you look at what the exchange invests in the areas, arts, organizations, as well as scholarships, as you spoke earlier, why invest in the arts? I believe that the arts differentiate Sarasota from every other beautiful beach community in Florida. You know, they, I say it so often, but it's true. I mean, they bring, you know, beauty to our eyes, music to our ears. They make us laugh, they make us cry. You know, they unite us as a community, and I think that is so important. You know, it drives tourism, you know, provides jobs, and it influences our young people. So I, I think, I agree with Jim. I think that the players coming to Lakewood Ranch is a perfect fit, and we've talked about it a number of times, and the exchange has supported the players for over 50 years, and we're proud of that. So investment. You've heard your investment twice now, and I'm going to turn to Dr. Peabody and ask Dr. Peabody, why is Lakewood Ranch the ideal test bed for this initiative? So every day I'm reminded um, about the rubric that we created many, many years ago when we were looking for the ideal place to create the epicenter for brain health. 
And it's discussions like this that affirm our decision every day. And our rubric was long, and our search was throughout North America, including uh, the United States and Canada. And we landed here for a number um, of reasons. And one, one, of the, uh, one of the most important parts when you're thinking about a, an initiative that's going to be here, like the arts, that will be here and outlast all of us, it has to be a good fit, right? Uh, the goals, the vision, the mission have to be a good fit with the region that we're going to land. And we landed in Lakewood Branch as our headquarters and the Florida Gulf Coast as our epicenter. And I can tell you that one of the most important components was the richness of the arts and culture. Because like the engine that you speak about, we view arts and culture as one of the drivers, one of the engines that will promote optimal brain health across the lifespan. And it was absolutely essential. And it, I can tell you that from vacationing here for 35 plus years consistently over and over again, the culture is what brought, brought me back as well as the angels in the sunshine. But if you look at the brain health pillars, these are pr from a scientific or clinical perspective, these are known as protective factors, brain health protective factors. And if you look at these, nearly every one of these factors, which are found throughout um, Lakewood Ranch and the Florida Gulf Coast, support the pillars or the protective factors of brain health. So we didn't have to come in and create a community, create a region that also had to create the protective factors of brain health. They were here. They were here. And so I say thank you. It, um, for, for us, this was, it, um, it, although it didn't hit our radar as a possible um, location until the very end of the selection <coughs> process, that was because it, I wanted to come here only for vacation, not to work. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> um, and so I say thank you to all of you because this is the right place and arts and culture will be a major, major um, reason that we are successful in our approach. So thank you. You know, I, I looked at the seven pillars and um, except for sleep, I don't think Jeffrey gets any sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's doing well in the sense. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna change gears just a little bit and ask Aaron. Aaron, when you as a CEO um, think back, what was the most difficult thing to overcome when you were advocating your vision? I think any pivot with an organization, especially one that has been around for 62 years, um, is uncomfortable. I think when you have a generational shift, I think sometimes that's uncomfortable. Of the seven people that were with the organization when I started, there's only one that's still there. So it has been a full turnover. Um, but those 800 volunteers are still with us. So there is that sustaining generational, um, you need the arc to be longer than just you know 10 years. You need to think about that 100 year arc. Um, and were the changes I was making too drastic? Were they um, out of the spirit of the organization, out of the mission of the organization? And I think the answer is no, and I think the, the success that we've had would, would prove that. But I think the, the being able to articulate the mission shift clearly, concisely, and compassionately, I think was incredibly important. And without that, it would not have taken as well as it has. I think the mission shift um, was just two words, honestly. It was the original mission, to enrich the community through live theater. Fairly basic, right? You can get away with a lot under that mission. <laughs> um, but we had just two words at it. I said, okay, let's, let's just tweak. To enrich and create community through live theater. And I think that idea of community creation um, was essential. I think when people heard that, the, they could tie, tie their wagon to that because it is so clear that community creation community development is essential. Um, so some of that hurdle is, okay, how do we take an organization that may have been a little siloed, 
Um, you know, because we were in a, a beautiful little firehouse theater, and we were there for 45 years. 60 seat theater, and we moved into this gorgeous downtown Main Street, 210 seat proscenium and 80 seat black box. So it was a huge change for the theater. How do you take the kind of insulated environment of that smaller theater and, and throw open the doors and say, now we're something else? And it, it, it took a decade. And I think, I think allowing yourself the time to make the shift is important. You can't just turn on a dime. Um, but then, again, articulating the reasons why it's important. We are now a cultural institution in our community. And that has certain responsibilities to it. And I think that sharing that love, sharing that wonderful experience that people have, you know, maybe it was a, a group of 50 people and now it's a group of 500. There's going to be a little less opportunity for that 50 than there, than there was. And, and making sure that the ego falls away and the impact and the mission rises. I think that was, that was what allowed us to sell the shift. Um, and there's still, there's people who fell away because they were in it for the wrong reasons. And allowing yourself to be okay with that, I think is, is important too. Because if they're not on board this mission, it's, they're gonna pull you down. And that, that kind of toxic energy can really um, impact an organization just like the positive energy can. So being okay with that, I think, was, was important as well. Um, what opportunities does Lakewood and Grange offer in some expansion for the exchange? We're not really looking at um, putting up a satellite location. However, a large percentage of our shoppers, as well as consigners, and um, even our volunteers come from the Lakewood Ranch area. They come because they a one excellent shopping opportunity, but also because they they understand that everything that they buy it goes to help the arts, and um, so it's kind of a win-win. Same thing for our consigners. They um, we pay the highest commission rate in town. We pay 65 percent. We also get to write off the 35 percent that we operate our business on, and they get to walk away and say, you know what? I just did something great for my community, and again, it's a win-win. Our, our volunteers, a lot of them have made friends over the years. We have a lot of volunteers that have been coming to the exchange for over 30 years. And um, over the last two years, we had two women that just retired from volunteering, and they both had turned 100 years old. So um, it's, it's a very interesting atmosphere. They, they come to us when they're younger, and they stay with us when they get older, and then it's our, uh, um, our responsibility, excuse me, to, to take care of them and make sure that they have something useful that they can do and feel good about themselves. So um, I invite all of you to come. It's a, a wonderful place, and um, we plan on continuing to support the players. So Dr. Peabody, could you explain the short-term impact of the Brain Health Initiative as it relates to the long-term implica implications of uses of your data as you will be collecting it? Yeah, so the short-term the short -term impact um, is, is something that I hope you're all already beginning to experience. Simply by us raising awareness that brain health is health. That brain health is about all of us. That brain illness is about most of us. That you can do something to take control of your own brain health. That you can work together as a community to increase outcomes. That brain health should be at the forefront not as an afterthought related to our health. But simply by starting with some of the things that we're doing this month that, we've, that we have um, initiated as we've launched the Brain Health Campaign, this month focusing on stress resilience, for example, raising awareness about the implications of stress, good, bad, or neutral stress on our bodies physiologically, 
that begins to move the needle. People start to begin to think about the stress that they experience, for better or worse, as it impacts the performance of their brain on a daily basis and the health of their brain on a cumulative basis. So just by beginning immediately to raise awareness, the mindful triathlon that occurred um, on Saturday, a, another amazing integration of brain health science translated to application to begin to raise awareness in the community about brain health. So those are immediate implications. And as we're moving through this process, we are studying and collecting data at every step along the way. People often think that, that data is the actual study, the longitudinal study, which is one of three of the components of our initial brain health um, project or initiative. That pilot, um, which will launch in the spring, we're building up for that. That pilot will provide the very the statistical data that um, people oftentimes think about in terms of research. But the research has started. We are beginning the process as we integrate and create this collective impact approach to increasing outcomes. So there is an immediate effect. Each month, a new pillar, a, a new protective factor is shared with the community through media, through opportunities to speak um, with the community and through interactive um, engagement, including our lecture series. Those are immediate impacts that aren't happening anywhere else globally, but they're happening here. So that's the immediate, the data then that will be collected, the traditional data that will be collected will be used to inform not only uh, what we will continue to do to engage and raise awareness and work with our collaborators in the community, but it will also be used, this is very exciting, to help us with prevention, with early identification, so that you're, again, so that brain health is considered at the forefront as opposed to an afterthought. So everything that we're doing, um, is really helping us to raise awareness that brain health matters and that it is health and that it's something we should be thinking about on a daily basis. And that's the immediate thing. So, Jim, knowing that our host of players is in the process of um, building or, or getting ready to build a new facility, tell me a little bit about the Alliance. Where does your funding source come from? And then you distribute it, as I know. How, how do you make decisions to distribute it? Uh, there are two or three answers to that question. I'll be very brief about them. Uh, each of the funding sources that the Alliance is able to affect has a dedicated cause. Uh, in other words, we, we can't vary from what the purpose of that money is. For the tourist development tax, that's tax money that does not come from our pockets. It comes from the pockets of visitors who come here and make a contribution. But it's still tax money. So that money has a specific purpose, to develop tourism in the area. Uh, we have other sources. If you buy a state-of-the-arts license plate uh, for Sarasota County, a piece of your fee for that purpose comes to the Arts and Cultural Alliance each month, and we are charged to take that money to help develop the arts in Sarasota County. All right. So again, it's got a purpose for that. Now, I'm going to give you the good news and the bad news. The good news is there are lots of sources of public funding for the arts. By and large, 90% of all funding for the arts comes from private contributions. There ain't no easy answer for the government to pay it off, okay? And here's what I encourage you to do. The word volunteer has come up three or four times here. As the players move into Lakewood Ranch, it's going to be you that will make it happen. They're going to need your energy as volunteers. For example, in Sarasota, where we have a lot of those groups already, <clears throat> there are hundreds of thousands of volunteer hours that take place every year to make those organizations and their missions happen. They could not operate without it, period. Just like Karen couldn't operate without her uh, volunteers. 
And as the community continues to develop, having organizations like this who say, okay, we want to serve a purpose in the community, we want that purpose to be to support the arts because we believe it's important. That way, their volunteers have a purpose of what they can do. Um, looking at the capital campaign to build out here, this is going to be a critical area. If you want this theater and this center out here, you're going to need to get involved. I, they simply cannot sell enough tickets to build a successful arts organization, period. It takes private philanthropy. But look at the interesting thing that's happened in Sarasota County. Two of the largest, I think the two largest community foundations in the state of Florida are located in Sarasota County. Not in, not in Miami, not in Fort Lauderdale, not in Orlando, not in Jacksonville, but it's here. And the reason it's here is because the arts and cultural organizations attract people who could live anywhere in the world that they want to live, and they want to live in a beautiful place that has high quality art that they can be involved in. And therefore, they get involved in those community foundations. And guess what? <clears throat> Only about 25% of their giving goes to support the arts. The rest of it goes to children's services, it goes to schools, it goes to all of those things that make a community a great community. So what I'm saying to you is that you really should embrace, and I think you are by the fact that you're here, Players Theater coming here. And you need to embrace it with your time and your energy and with your money. Because if you don't invest in this institution, they won't be able to make it happen out here. All right? That's what has made Sarasota such a strong arts and cultural community, is that the people in the community <clears throat> are invested. And that's a charge that I give to you. You know, if you have the ability to be a philanthropist and to help them out with a large gift, please do it. If not, help them out with a gift that can be at the level that works for you, and then go out and help them find those eight or ten philanthropists who are going to help them raise that $16 million to get this first phase off the ground. Because it won't happen otherwise. So that's, that's not the bad news, that's the great opportunity. We have an opportunity to invest in our community, and we can invest our time, and we can invest our money, and I encourage you to do that. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit and just ask anyone in the panel, what did the future of the arts look like, and where are we in 20 years? Whoever wants to. What's the future, and where are we in 20 years? I think we're another generation. Uh, which is a beautiful thing and kind of a scary thing, because that generation in some, in, in some cases doesn't exist yet uh, with us, so we need to be ready for them. I think there's a lot of weird generational strife that doesn't make sense to me, and hopefully that goes away, because we all need to kind of band together and, and make, make it better together. Uh, I think it's... It's going to be, there's, there's a new concept coming from the NEA called IDEA, which acronyms are everywhere, but this is, I like this one. Um, it stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Access. And I think those four things are going to be much more present in the arts, and I'm glad, because it's about time. Um, and so we need to be ready for that, and we need to be actively engaged in those efforts. So I think that's going to help. I think quality of place is going to be more and more and more and more important. So having a robust arts environment wherever you are is going to not ensure, but certainly assist any community to grow and sustain itself. So that idea of the arts being an essential um, foundational part of your community. So I think Lakewood Ranch and Sarasota is doing a great job in that, but that's going to become more and more important because people have more choice in where they live. Uh, we talk, I, I read in the Lakewood Ranch book, you know, they were talking about uh, what community of origin, and I thought that was really interesting because in the Midwest, we just stay in a lot of cases, but here people are choosing to come here. And if that's the case, create the most awesome place you can because they have an infinite amount of choices with the, the world that we now live in. 
So I think quality of place, the idea initiatives, I think all of that is going to be not not less important or as important, but more important. I'd like to make a comment on that, and I agree with you 100%, and I think you're right on target. And I think that the future of the arts is going to be exactly what we make it, pure and simple. If you look at our history, going all the way back to ancient man, the thing that has always sustained society has been art. It lasts when other things go away, generational shifts, uh, business shifts, things change, but fundamental art is a part of all generations and can be in the future. And this is some of the place where the Alliance can work with the community here, all over the place, to help make some things happen. We have, right now, ongoing within the Alliance, an idea initiative group to help get more involved in inclusion and activity throughout the entire region, not just over in the city of Sarasota. Uh, we have for years, for over 30 years, been the link in Sarasota County that works with the school system that has ensured that the arts have never been cut from the schools in Sarasota County schools. And we will continue. So if you look at how do we influence the future, it's how do we influence our children, how do we set the standards for our communities, what we want to be. You're absolutely right. I came, I bought a place uh, down here in 1973. And I didn't live here for a long, long time. At that time, Florida was the 38th largest state in the union, population-wise. Today, it's the third largest state. The only states that are larger than Florida are California and Texas. Not New York, not Michigan, not Illinois, not any of those traditional huge states. So whether we like it or not, we are growing. And we're going to continue to grow. But we have the opportunity to put our stamp on what we want the future of Florida and the arts in Florida to be because of the decisions that we're making today, the decision you're making right now about Players Theater coming to Lakewood Ranch is going to be the future in 50 years. And you're going to look back and say, wow, aren't we glad we did that? Aren't we glad that John Ringling donated his house and his art collection to Sarasota? Aren't we glad that all of those visual artists who came there <clears throat> brought people with them that helped us develop a great visual arts community, a great, a great uh, performing arts community, a great literary arts community, and it was the presence of the arts that made all of that happen over the years. It's not the only thing there, but it's attracted great people, a diversity of people, minds that think a little bit different. Minds that are 100 years old will continue to volunteer for something that they think is important. And that's how we're going to affect the future of the arts. Um, I, I spoke a little bit before about the youth. And I think that the arts here in our community, they really impact them. And, you know, they, all of them have a, a youth program that is available. Now, our children may never learn to love the arts, but we hope that they learn to at least appreciate them, which will take us into the future. So, um, my last question for the panel, and anyone can take it. What could the arts do to benefit the Lakewood Ranch community? So I think, um, again, one of the reasons that we selected um, this region is because of the richness of arts and cultures and the implication of arts and culture and the implication, um, genuinely, what it means to bring <coughs> development, to bring maturation, and to keeping the brain as healthy as it can be into the aging process. It's not, it doesn't only have implications from just the structural, physiological perspective of the brain, but also from its, its functional capacity. It, we want to be able to help the community understand that engaging in the arts, it is an intervention. It is a magic pill against 
psychiatric, depression, anxiety. It, it also is from a neurodevelopmental perspective and from an aging perspective, it is a buffer. It is a, um, a, a buffer to, to aging and it is a catalyst to development. So it's, it's really important that, that, they, that we're all working together, that the arts and um, cultural community and that the brain health community, that we're working together to spread this word. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm going to take this one and answer just a little bit. Uh, I think that the very fact that we have initiatives like the brain health initiative the coming year and we've had aging initiatives and other things is stimulated by the fact that we have people who embrace the idea of change and development who are attracted here because they want to keep their minds active and stimulated through the arts and stimulated through things that can help us be an engaged population if i were to ask you how many people in this room think that if you made it to 65 you've done a great job uh, let me tell you what, that's a good thing. Let me tell you what, what, what I see in this area are not only young people, but many of us who are aiming at whatever the, the ceiling may be and being active and being involved. And I think that uh, what I will say to you is that the arts are here to help uh, Lakewood Ranch specifically in any way that we can. And what the job of those who live here needs to be is to go about your growth and community development with purpose and to be purposeful in making sure that as you build and make decisions that you make sure that arts and culture are a part of the mindset for doing that now that doesn't mean that you have to go get enough 12 theaters or you know whatever that may be but it needs to be purposeful in the development of your community as it is already. I mean, I, I deal with people from out here all the time, and there's, it's, it's the same great mindset. But let's just start plugging some things in here. You know, the idea of an art center out here should not be foreign to you. The idea of a great theater should not be foreign to us. It's how we build uh, our, you know, our communities. I can assure you that the community will be embracing the school system of Lakewood Ranch, just like it is of every other school in Sarasota County and around it, to make sure that those arts are there. So it's there for you. It's a matter of how do we pull it together as individuals and make something happen locally here as you move forward. I need to connect that, this question and the following question, or the previous question. Um, I was reading your Lakewood Ranch book here, learning all about you. Uh, one of the things that struck me was this one line, our current success is owed to our initial decisions. Right? right? right. Yeah. And that is true now, but our future success is owed to our current decisions. Right. And I think the current decision is bring the arts, bring culture, invest in those things, because you are now setting, you are now planting that acorn that will be that mighty oak that has now you know happened for for liquid ranch now the next one is coming and how wonderful is it that you have that opportunity to plant that seed today for the next generations that come forward and the arts is definitely a seed that's worth planting so we we have a few minutes does anyone in the audience have a question And, uh, Dr. Peabody, I stood up. Hi, uh, I'm Judy Corcoran. I'm the film commissioner for Sarasota County. And I work with electronic entertainment. I work with Jim. I work with all the arts. And as a person who got into this business when I was three years old through live theater and my mother, and I've worked with Sarasota Players, I've worked at the Venice Theater, Florida Studio Theater, I've been on the stage for a lot, a lot of years, and live theater has been a huge foundational part of my entire life, which led me with electronic arts. But what I want to say here in support of live theater, performing arts, live performing arts, is that what people don't know is that arts and entertainment is one of the few industries left in the United States where we are still a global leader and a global exporter. We have a positive trade balance. We have a trade surplus every year in arts entertainment and intellectual property. 
the creation of plays, the creation of screenplays, the creation of books, novels, poetry, music, and so forth. It is such an integral part of the economy of the United States, people don't realize how valuable it is. So everything that goes on here, what Jeffrey's doing with the players, growing that part of our economy, the entertainment part of our economy, is crucial. And it's one of the few things we in America can still claim as our industry. So I thank all of you for being a part of this and the, the brain health side of this as well. Early childhood learning and literacy and language skills is my avocation outside of film. And brain health starting with infants through the first crucial three years all the way to the 85 and 95 year olds is going to be the essential part also of keeping our intellectual property and our entertainment content alive and growing. So it, it's all part of a very, very big picture. And I would just welcome any input about how live theater and live performing arts can capitalize on the electronic arts side of it to raise the visibility. For example, having a YouTube channel of what the players is doing, subscriber-based, so every dollar your subscribers pay drives cash into your tills. So I would love to you know, get that too. Uh, questions from the audience. I have a question. Hi everybody, thank you for being here. This is a really great uh, advocation for what you do, thank you. Um, I am newer to the area, about two and a half years now, and I have an arts background, Columbia College graduate, woo, Chicago! <laughs> um, but I'm dying to get more involved with the arts talked with Morgan about this a couple times, and I think there are a lot of people like me in the Lakewood Ranch area who feel like they want to get involved, but it's kind of like, how do we, and when do we, and where do we, right? So do you have any feedback for people like me that want to get involved with some sort of either volunteering or maybe on stage ourselves and what that process would be? Uh, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Go to sarasotoarts.org and send me a note. Uh, but the answer is there are a lot of opportunities. Some of it is actually reaching out and, you know, saying, I want to volunteer, I want to make, I want to get involved. But the, the Alliance, for example, we have a program going on right now that we've been running for many years that we call the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Arts uh, Cultural Collective. And essentially, it's a, a program for people in the community at any age that want to be more involved in the arts and want to learn about the arts here. So you can join this group, and we go to about eight different e events and opera you know, organizations, the opera, the ballet, the theater, and so on, as a group. And you get uh, one session where you sit down with the management of that organization, and they tell you about their business model and how they run their business and what volunteers mean to them. And then at another point in that same month, you and your spouse or friend and that uh, the rest of that group go to a production at that facility. All right, so for a very small fee, you can get involved and learn a lot about the backgrounds of arts and cultural organizations in the community. And then what we do is we fill in uh, uh, for example, Selfie Gardens may not be putting on a production, which they probably are not, but we usually do a reception there so you can learn about what's happening there. Uh, so that, that type of programming is available through the Arts and Cultural Alliance. Uh, all of the arts organizations and cultural organizations have very, very active volunteer uh, programs. And it, sometimes you have to reach out or you have to call a guy like me that says, how do I reach the right person over there? And that's part of the role we play. So please use us to help you do that. Okay, thank you. The other thing that you could do, if there's a particular organization that you're interested in, just call the volunteer coordinator, and they would be happy to have you come in. <laughs> we need to love our volunteers. And I don't need a microphone. I want, I want to say a couple of things. Um, I, too, am a transplant, fairly new. I vacation here. I am I always knew I wanted to retire here because of the arts. That was the I. And I got to see Lakewood Ranch through the eyes of a new homeowner. Uh, her realtor, and I can't tell you who it is um, because I don't know, talked about this community, talked about what the plan was. 
and the two things that created their want to move here was the golf course and Players Theater moving to Lakewood Ranch. Those two items were the things that tipped the scale because they weren't looking at Sarasota. They, they had no plans to move to Sarasota. So don't leave here and think that was nice. Please leave here and think, what can I do? Who can I, who can I introduce the players to? Who do I know? What can I do? Don't forget why you are here and take action because it is a gem that you will be proud of today and into the future. One more, and I won't need a microphone either. Everybody, I'm, I'm John Holtz. I'm the campaign co-chair for the players, and our last two speakers um, love to chat with you more about um, volunteering on, on our campaign. Um, something that Dr. Peabody said that really struck me, and you know, putting it all together, narrowing the gap between um, how long we live and how long our brain is really working for us. Um, my wife and I have been going to the players right after we moved, since right after we moved here. And going to the theater, for me, has been the, the biggest stress reliever. I, I stress out about my stress. So <laughs> going, going to the players and, and sitting in that theater, and we're sitting around other folks who already get it. Their, their brain health and their, their lives, they know, they know all about narrowing that gap. And whatever generation, whatever age they are, they're working on it. So I certainly echo the comments of, of the last uh, two speakers and how um, Lakewood Ranch, and all of you have, have said this emphatically, SMR made no little plans when they built this place east of the freeway, this cow pasture, and, they, and everyone said, who's gonna live there? Why, would, why are you even doing this? This is, this is so huge, you've bit off so much. The Brain Health Initiative is so huge. This is a, this is a big, long-term investment. The players are exactly the same way. This is no little plan. And the folks who have been in Chicago know all about Daniel Burnham, the planner and the architect. He said, make no little plans because they have no magic to stir one's blood. Because when you make little plans, they often fizzle. So what the players are doing, what the Brain Health Initiative is doing, what Jim Shirley and Karen Koblenz and what you've done, Aaron, these are big plans. So, um, like you had just said, please, this is an intimate group. Go tell seven people to get on board this train and sell the players to the rest of us because the next time we have one of these, we need to open up these walls and have a couple hundred people in this room. So I'll turn it back to you, Don. Thank you. I'd like to have the ability, to, and I was about to say this when you stood up, but uh, a very, very wise man here, one of the, the best arts minds that I know, said to me about 15 years ago, Jim, if you want to build a great organization, come up with a big idea and make it happen. And I think the great thing is, is here today, you've got a big idea, an idea of having a, a community performing arts center right in the middle of your community. This is the kind of thing that all of us should get together and work toward and make it happen. Because if we wait for just Jeffrey and his team to make it happen, it'll probably happen, but a lot longer out than we all think or want to be. If we all get behind it, you can be living in this theater in a very short period of time. And we're not talking about something that is overwhelming here. So I encourage you to embrace this big idea and help them make it happen.